Hello and welcome to the big picture. Pension reforms have been in the making for over a decade now in this country. Even as the need for it is being felt with the increase in population of the elderly persons. By 2016, it is expected that 9% of the total population in this country will be over 60 years. The Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority Bill, which was first introduced in Lok Sabha in 2005, however, continues to be stuck even as two standing committees studied it and gave its report, and two Lok Sabhas have been unable to pass it so far. The union cabinet, which was expected to approve the bill with certain amendments, was, however, forced to withhold it following objections from one of its allies, Trinamool Congress, on Thursday. The new pension system has, however, been in place since 2004 for the central government employees and to all citizens since 2009. The NPS, however, has not been a great success, even as opposition to it continues about it being made into a contribution-based system from the existing benefit-based. There are also issues about private players, foreign investment into the sector, among others. Today, we will look into all these issues while asking the question, why the pension reforms has got stuck in this country? To discuss this, I have here with me today Tapan Sen, General Secretary C2, and a CPIM MP whose party has raised several objections to the PF RDA bill. Yogendra Narayan, former chairman of the board of New Pension System Trust, and Gautam Bharadwaj, director, Invest India Micro Pension Services Private Limited. Welcome to all my guests. First, let me go to Tapan Sen. Tapan, uh, your party has been consistently having some opposition to some, some of the provisions of this bill. And uh, to the standing committee report, even you, your, your party member who was there in the committee has also given a dissent note. Your, your objection seems to be fundamental, right? Yeah. That you don't want this kind of a new system where it is contribution-based and not uh, what it used to be earlier. Actually, our main opposition to this scheme, that whole scheme of things, right. it is popularly called pension reform, as if something noble is going to be produced uh, under the soil, Indian soil. Uh, if, if you say like that, there are a number of pension schemes which really needs reform. Mm. In nowadays, when the old people number is increasing, <clears throat> it is a duty of a, any civilized government to give them uh, a provision for human survival. Universal so pension is a separate old, issue. Old man pension is 200 rupees. So don't say it no, pension no, Universal pension is a separate what issue. Is, so, so that's why my first point, don't call it pension reform. As if something noble has got struck, it's not that. Mm. Secondly, this package of whatever they are proposing, we are opposing to it because those who are getting it, they are being put in disadvantage. And the NPS is not going to, we are sure, as, as we understand, is not going to give them the same pension benefit as they are enjoying earlier, so far as the government employees right. are concerned. Only go, as and as third as aspect of this, it was PFRDA bill when it was struck at the time of UPA1 government. Yes. At that time, NPS in general for all that concept did not come into being. Right. Subsequently, came, maybe... Okay. Only maybe, in 2009 it came. Uh, maybe to sell it, make it more sellable. Uh, also, the unorganized sector workers, etc., et those stories being talked about. But the whole scheme of things, even the sabalaman that they are playing right. with, uh, it is just whatever the, they are claiming, it just cannot be arithmetically proved that that will be beneficial to the concerned uh, workforce who will be embracing that uh, uh, NPS. So, given this situation, what as the workers, I am as representing employees and workers, as we could see that the present, whatever pension system is there at present, those who are enjoying, they are putting them to a disadvantage without ensuring the return. They are wholly throwing the whatever come to us is pension absolutely dependent on the market. And that cannot ensure a minimum survival required pension okay. for anybody who will be requiring a pension okay. in his old age when they are not able to work. Okay. And last point is that, you see, pension for whom? After working for 30 years for their superannuated retired life to categories of market. That is the basic uh, issue Absolutely. which need to be addressed we will. So in the name of so-called pension reform. Right. 
Mr. Yogendra Narayan. Yes. You have been the chairman of this uh, new pension scheme trust since 2008. Yes. Even before this, what Tapan was talking about, that you know, it's even unorganized sectors and others have also been included in 2009. So, the, the fundamental problems raised by Tapan Singh. It's, he's, he says that this is not going to be helpful to the people. Do you, how do you defend this scheme? Well, uh, first of all, I must clarify that it doesn't cover those government employees who have joined the government prior to 2004. Right. So, as far as their pension is co uh, co Cons concerned, concerned, they continue to get the pension at the same rate. No, I, don't think, I don't think his uh, objection no, is no, only before No, I'm just trying to clarify. I'm sure he, they will take up the cause of the government servants who have that joined after 2004 also. Now <laughs> that those, justifies my point. Now, those who joined after 1st January 2004 are covered under this new pension scheme trust. They, have, they, they give, have no choice. They have no. I mean, Contract it is service. a part of the service condition. Absolutely. So people who are joining government are consciously doing it, knowing that they have to contribute to their pension. We all who worked in the government never contributed to our pension. Yeah, right. And we got uh, these pensions which have been revised upwards in the 6th pay commission, 5th right. pay commission, but and enjoying the benefit. And a lot of people who have retired in, from government service who are getting, many of them are getting more pension than they ever yes. got the salary. Right. Now, the present uh, new pension scheme trust says that some, almost 85% uh, will be in corporate bonds, government bonds, etc. And up to 15% you can invest in equities or mutual funds. Right. And the results of the uh, investments which we made under the new uh, pension scheme trust shows that we were able to give rate of uh, returns higher than what they were getting in the provident fund. The average rate of return for the last four years is now 8.8%, whereas uh, the government is giving only 8%. And the EPF gives, the EPF has given 9.5% and 8.5, between 8.5% and 9.5%. You are saying your annu annual average. average returns has come to about 8.08%. In, in spite so it is of less. the fact that... I mean, it, it is only proving his point. No, in spite of the fact that the market has gone down this year. When the market was up in the last three years, if you discount this year, we were giving up to 10.5, 11. I have, I, have, I have figures of that. 2009-10, the return on government securities, 10.02%. These are the highest returns. Mm. Return on corporate bonds, 10.04%. Return on equities, 25.94%. Yes. So it is the equities which, which, which really... That proves my point. Right. We were giving much higher. It's only in this year, when the markets have gone down, that the average has come down to 8.8. Otherwise, we were giving much higher than what the government is giving. Okay, let, let me come to Gautam. Gautam, taking forward the point made by Mr. Yogendra Narayan, if the markets are doing well, we will get you good returns. If the market doesn't do well, what happens? That is exactly the point which the opponents to this make. Well, I, I personally think that uh, this is not the correct argument, I okay. mean, or the correct issue, really. Okay. If I just take a step back and go back to what Mr. Sen was mentioning, right. Uh, my understanding is that he's questioning whether we need pension reforms, firstly. Absolutely. And secondly, he's saying... And what kind of be, reforms? Yeah, should it be... Is this the right way to do it? Right. Now, if you really look at what's already happening, we've got a civil service pension, which currently costs, I think, the exchequer about one and a half lakh rupees, one and a half lakh, lakh crores, crores every year between the centre and the state. And this is just 7% of the workforce. I think the social cost of paying one and a half lakh crores is much higher than what India can bear. Right. Look at the second pension system that exists, which is the EPFO. Mm -hmm. People contribute a quarter of their incomes for 25, 30, 35 years. A quarter of their incomes. This is probably one of the highest contribution rates in the world. And they're retiring be between, with between 25 this and 35,000 rupees. This quarter you're talking about includes the government's... Uh, well, no, this the, is the, employers, the employer's share also. Right, but if I'm an employer, then as far as I'm concerned, this is CTC. Okay. So it's cost to company. Right. Finally, it's really going out. Otherwise, I would have paid a higher income right. to my employee. So mm. I say, fine, I'll contribute on your behalf, but you'll need to take a pay cut. Right. I mean, the maths really works like that. So what, how it would work is that 25% of your income is going towards a pension and provident fund. Uh, Two-thirds of that goes into your PF, of which people are retiring traditionally, and we've analyzed data, with between 25 to 35,000 rupees in their account. Yeah. Now, whether they were getting... 10% or 8% or 17% per year, 
I don't think is the issue. Even if they were getting 8% per year, and if they were contributing 25% of their incomes, they should be all incredibly rich. So I think the systems that currently exist have failed to deliver. The EPFO has had 60 years, and it has failed to deliver failed on pensions. To you're, when you say failed to deliver, failed to deliver to the person, to the, to the, yeah, to the There employer. is only one reason for EPFO to exist. And that reason is to provide old age income security right. in a meaningful way and some dignified retirement to people who it is forcing contributions from. And because it is forcing contributions, the responsibility lies entirely on the state to make sure that they actually deliver. If it was voluntary and if I had an option to join EPFO, then it was my decision. Right. You're not giving me an option and you're getting me to retire with 25,000 rupees, which probably is three months of expenditure in my old age. Tapan, now, uh, he says the whole system has failed. How do you... You see, <clears throat> it was a conscious decision. Actually, workers, trade union movement, as I say, uh, they have consciously accepted uh, the EPF scheme in lieu of the pension scheme. At that time, there are another segment of workforce, they consciously accepted the non-contributory, that is, uh, they need not get any contribution from this employer. They have gone for a GPF scheme and also opted for a pension scheme which will ensure them pay as you go at least half of their last salary drawn on the average as their old age security. Present, what is being proposed, uh, we look into, uh, I look into that in that angle. Absolutely. The present pension scheme, what they are being, they are proposing, that will not ensure that security, ensured by the earlier scheme. So may simply I, the one workforce second, will one second, let stand get, to oppose. No, let me, and, let, one minute. No, let me get and your you are only re re limiting it to, again, as you are told, that EPF is a forced scheme. Similarly, for the 2004 afterwards, it is a forced system you are imposing on them. They have At no the choice. same time, you are telling it is a very noble scheme. Sir, I say, if you, you have to do, you do it. Gautam, Don't glorify it. Gautam, let me get uh, Yogin Narayan on this. Yes. See, he says that 50% of the last drawn salary, this has been, you know, the government employees have got, and many of people who are getting this pension, they have got used to it. You have also got used to it, I'm sure. That 50% of their last drawn salary plus you know, the BA, which, which keeps rising. With the index session. With, in, with the index. Is this something which can be assured in the new pension scheme? You see, the latest parliamentary standing committee's recommendations, right. which especially yes. the chairman has emphasized, Absolutely. is that one of the schemes that should be offered is a minimum rate of minimum return. Rate of assu minimum assured, assured return. rate of return. Yes. So now it is entirely the government servant's choice which scheme he opts for. And also 100% can, can, can go into government security. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's his choice. And as the scheme matures, even the government servants, if they want to, they will get this choice. Tapan, what do you think of this? You know, minim, this at least, this, <laughs> we, these amendments which you're talking about, you minimum assured rate uh, available on the government security go down. You're making every day. No, no. What, no. What, what, what is the amount on SDS? Most of the EPF contribution is to be uh, put in the special deposit scheme. Mm -hmm. What what are the amount it was given earlier? It was now it is drastically slashed down deliberately to ensure to push you to the stock market. So no. it's all, all deliberate yeah. policy intervention yeah, to yeah. popularize but, but, something. Yeah, Gautam, if you to popularize something unsellable to deliberately putting down. And today EPF no. is now being uh, what, what interest they are giving? They are giving uh, eight point uh, two five percent. Quickly. Although GPF is being allowed 8.6 percent interest, so I think on what, what is the basis? What is the logic behind it? Absolute terms, interest. What rates, is the logic behind Interest it? rates in absolute terms may have little meaning. If I today give 9 percent and inflation is 12, I think I'm doing a disservice. The yeah, only yeah. way, and we are a poor nation. I mean, mm. the, I don't think pension reforms is an argument where we should be pegging this to civil service pension benefits in some previous era. I don't think India can afford that, sir. We have 30 million taxpayers. One and a half lakh crores. I, do, you agree, I mean, do you agree with Gautam Tapan that one and a half lakh crores per year you see, for 7% of the population, he, he says that Girish, it is not sustainable. Girish, let me and tell you. And the rest of the population has nothing. You, you, and the rest of the what, population what, has what you can afford and what you can't afford, you cannot just take away piecemeal and judge on that. Hmm. You can afford to allow your tax default to increase to the tune of 135% in five years. If you can afford that, why don't you? If you can afford to give a tax foregone 
for 5 lakh crore rupees uh, every year. It, uh, it is increasing. And as on today, when you are, your finance minister is talking of pegging the general subsidy level to 1.75% in the coming one or two years of GDP, you are giving a tax subsidy, including tax default and tax foregone, to the tune of 4% of the GDP. What you can afford for 1% of the population. So what you can afford and what you don't afford, take together and discuss. Don't take out piecemeal and tell, tell okay. that, well, this pension uh, okay. uh, burden is a big villain and it, ca it cannot continue. No, no, he has, he, he Mind has it, a you are giving a service to those who are delivering your, creating your no, GDP. No, no. No, when you're talking of this, he, his point is that this this scheme which you're talking about, it, it you know, it, it only caters to 7% of the population. What about the rest 93%? And this 7%? And exactly. this new pension scheme is a, supposed to help all the other remaining 93%. What also. is his experience? We will, we will, we will, we will, we will. Girish, what is his experience? No, no, we'll now. continue this discussion. We'll continue on this, on this issue. We need to go into a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We're looking into the issue of pension reforms in the context of the PFRDA bill and asking why it has got stuck. Uh, Mr. Yogendra Narayan. Yes. See, he says that whatever his arguments you have heard, now tell me, how do you how do you counter those arguments of his? And he asks, what has been the experience? Anyway, this has been going on from 2004. I'm sure nobody has retired after that. Uh, whoever has got into this new scheme has not retired so far. So no. we, do, we really don't have any. Uh, to see. You see, uh, we really don't have any <laughs> statistics to. It's like saying hmm. that government servants are a class apart, and they should be always protected in the manner they've been protected in the past. Right. Now, if the uh, if this your service condition says that you will now have to contribute to your pension, it's your choice whether you want to join the government service or not. Right. In the private sector, they don't have this sort of scheme. In any country you go abroad, the government's burden on pension has got reduced by this manner that you open it up to these several schemes which are floating in the market. Right. And let the market also dictate terms. I, you yourself just now showed the figure that on equity you can get up to 25%. Only on equity, but on the other on, on other counts. That's right. The, in but fact, on other counts, they're pretty low. But and especially, this, that, this needs to be done. This needs to be, as far as the unorganized sector is concerned, the returns have been pretty low and they are for the unorganized sector. But that is why, that, the standing also, committee has noted. We will, we will but that is why I am saying this, is that the, the more you allow these schemes the money in the schemes to be invested in equities, mutual funds. You yourself said the 25% rate of return. Right. That is one year. Huh. Because next year, next for government servants, we have not allowed in excess of 2009, 2009-10, it was 25.94. But 2010-11, it came down drastically to 11.89. Right. But we have not allowed, for the government servants, we have not allowed beyond 15% at all. 15% of the total? Total invest. Okay. If you can give invest more money in the market, if you if a government servant wants to invest, today, does he have the option? Right now, he doesn't have the option because okay. of this protection we are trying to give him to protect his rate of return, etc. Right. So we we would like it to open up to fifty percent, sixty percent, and we we won't compel market. him. Yes, in the equity market, hmm. we won't compel him. It's it's his choice. Right. We are giving him a choice with any scheme he can take, and that's happening abroad also. And this heavy subsidy on, uh, I would call it, a, it's a subsidy, uh, as far as, even if I'm pro provoking him a bit, but this heavy pension uh, provision you're making in the budget, it's cutting away all the other social welfare schemes also somewhere. Now, a decision has been taken that government servants joining after 2004 will be under this new pension scheme uh, provisions. Well, it's a conscious decision of that applicant to join the government or okay. not. Okay. I'm, I'm just looking at the committee's report, the standing committee's report, the latest report of the standing committee, Ashwin Sinha's committee, where they say that the corpus, uh, July, this is the July 2011 uh, figures, the corpus was about less than 10,000 crores. 
and the subscriber base was 23.56 lakhs. And the committee has expressed its you know, disappointment at the way things have happened. Why is it that the NPS scheme has not gained ground so far? Is this because of the, all these See, objections? Two, two things have happened. Hmm. One is, of course, the present figures are 17,000 crores, uh, which uh, are with corpus the has gone up to 17,000. 17, and the uh, subscribers have gone up to more than 30 lakhs. Okay. Of course, in this, about uh, 12 lakhs are from the state government hmm. servants. And about How many states have joined this? Uh, out so of far, the, about 16 states? No, no, no. Out of the 28 states, 25 have joined. The only three states which have not joined are West Bengal, Kerala, Kerala and Tripura. <laughs> only these three states. Mm. All other states have joined and they are finding it quite beneficial okay. uh, to join this scheme. Okay. Gautam, you, you had <coughs> fundamental difference with what uh, he, he was talking about. Well, I, I think I have a fundamental difference with uh, the scope of the debate. I really think there is no politics in pension. The only politics, the only disadvantaged population that could appear on the horizon is somebody who thought he could get a civil service pension is not now going to get a civil service pension. I'm saying, what about the 100 million people who are currently standing at a stage where they're destitute, they're forced to work till they die? And this is, I mean, we are seeing today in front of us a similar kind of dithering which has caused over the last 60 years uh, a, a status where 100 million people have no way of, of living a dignified life. Now we can continue this debate and say no, no, we need 10% inequities or we need 3% inequities or we need 15. I don't think there is, this is not really the key issue here. The key issue is that we have 300 million people, all those 300 million people currently have no pension provision at all. Now you, if you cut back on equities, what you're really saying is, can we give them, a, a, as the standing committee also says, can we give them some guarantees? Can we give them some G6? Now, when you give guarantees, you are going to force these people to invest in a portfolio which, which suppresses their returns. So you, you're not in favor of those guarantees also? Absolutely. So you don't the, want the minimum guarantees also how to would you How would you provide guarantees? The only way to provide guarantees is to say, let me invest my portfolio into something which doesn't have too much of volatility. So you would be forced to invest in government how, securities. How, he says that, you know, it's not a practical thing. How, how are you going to... The amendments, it's not the PRFDA, PFRDA bill, the amendments which were supposed to have been accepted yesterday by the cabinet, which is now uh, stalled, you know, put it off. One other thing was the minimum assured returns. How is it going to be ensured? You see, uh, we in the trust or in the PFRDA were never in favor of, of this an minimum. assured minimum rate of uh, returns. returns. Because we were linking it, and we always uh, recommended linking it to the market. Right. And uh, as uh, Gotham says, if you want to fix a minimum rate of return, as has been recommended by the Parliamentary Standing Committee, then you naturally go into very conservative Absolutely. planning of the financial investments you make, which uh, benefits the subscriber from getting higher returns. So what we are saying is, leave it to the subscriber. And Let this the, be one of the choices. And leave it to the market. Leave No, no. Leave it to leave the it subscriber. Leave it to the subscriber right. to which decide. scheme does he want to take. Okay. okay. Suppose he wants to take equity 50%. Why, who are we to say, no, 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 don't I take it. So if he wants to take 100% government securities, let him take. Absolutely. Okay. It's his choice. What, what is your objection to this kind of way? You know, no, no. Having, a see, choice, having a choice, give, we are giving you three, four choices. The subscriber decides about which one is better. 300 million people. Right. Do, can you understand that, uh, can you envisage in our country mm. that they will be able to make a right choice and lose his entire savings no, through lifetime savings at the end that, that, of the day? The investor uh, awareness, or, or, or investor or education have, programs. Or they have to depend things. on the pink paper advertisements. You no, tell I, don't, me. I don't think those people read pink number paper. One, number two, uh. number two, you see, I don't like to go into the debate at all. Mm. I, I understand his point. 7% of the person, country cannot afford today to give a point. Okay, fine. But do you mean that by under, undermining them, you are giving less of the 300 million people a better deal? It has not yet proven. Sir, all Mr. Narayan is also saying is it that is better, everybody better, better, is different. You are relying on it? the volatility. Please. Yes. You are relying on the volatility of the market and it is... At least to my knowledge, really? it's an international experience that volatility of market can never give a better return these kind of public funds. 
it was there since continuing because government plays a role in those countries. If it is goes, return goes below a particular benchmark, they assures that return. Volatility. Government, which in our country, Gautam, country like ours, Gautam, you are not. He's talking uh, of volatility. With, so with, I with, think with that's the, a big risk. You know, with, 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 Unless with there the, is a commitment. With very little evidence which we which we have so far since this scheme has been running only for a last very very few years. From 2009, we are taking. So from the, in the unorganized sector of 2009. In, in, in just two years, the volatility which is talking about is very evident here. And there but, is you know, negative return. 2009, 10, 20, negative noted. return is not there. There is no negative return. Up, go through the standing committee report. Volatile. For one segment, there is a negative return. Right. Correct way to so think about this is, if, if there is a worker who saves 200 rupees a month, right. and if you give her a GSEX return of 6%, yes. I am assuring you that today you can write down that she will outlive her savings. GSEX government is securities. government securities. So I'm saying, a lot of people will not understand yeah. that. So I'm <laughs> saying if you give her government securities, yes. and my sense would be that by 65, she would again be destitute. The, her only hope is to get the high returns that you are currently seeing, which is this 25%. I agree there is volatility, but that's a product design issue. And I think the PFRDA has got a very good auto choice system where the person's risk uh, in, the, in the form of equities in the portfolio comes down as the person proceeds towards old age. So this portfolio gets automatically rebalanced. I think the scheme has been very well designed. I think the debate in both outside and in the parliament should be how can we quickly get 300 million people to start saving for old age and not a debate the, saying 26% or, or guarantees or you no, know but both 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 the issues with the issues which you no, have no, raised I think uh, Mr Gautam I, I, I fail to understand one but the NPS is already in motion yes sir. yes nobody exactly. nobody objects right no. people in their own wisdom should have taken that they have not taken uh, because they are not wise enough. Uh, uh, nine they are not wise people, enough. They don't like people, to gamble with their future. So. Nine lakh people have been covered under the Som Lamon scheme, which was introduced scheme. by Mr. Pranab Mukherjee right. uh, about uh, a year back. Right. Nine lakh people have already joined that scheme. Under that scheme, this is the this is an unorganized sector. Yes, right. the number you is thirty-seven crore. So uh, if you invest, up, Ranji, the number is thirty-seven crore. No, no. The number is uh, and, and please note. Uh, and, out of my little bit experience yes. in working among those workers, I don't know how much you are exposed to them, mm. many of them will not be able to even continue their contribution. Because three months they are having work, another six months they are not having. On the average, the, in the part of the informal sector workforce, the agricultural part of de, uh, uh, people, they get only 30 days work to the ranging from 30 days to 72 days work in a year out of 365 so, days. Anyway, the, the, you I expect think, them to continue. Uh, we are running completely running out of time. And, and, and Sir, if, uh, their we didn't, we didn't, if their contribution gets discontinued, Nothing we is couldn't, explained. We Nothing couldn't really is defined anywhere. No, no, we couldn't really discuss the issue of FDI but and things like that. But not, I'm, I'm not going into FDI at all. I'm dealing so with the, the problem, problem of the scheme. Crap. We will see the as the as the as the days go by. The, hopefully, there will be more debate and more clarity on this issue. Thanks to all my guests. Thank you, Tapan Sen. Thank you, Mr. Yogendra Narayan and Gautam Bharadwaj. Thank Please you. keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture on Monday.